Hey guys, Tap Daddy here. Uh, today I wanted to give you a guide to purchasing equipment. I know that when you're first starting out, uh, figuring out what equipment you actually need can be very daunting. And then for also for those of you uh, that already have been producing for a while, you've got your DAW, you've got a MIDI controller, uh, but maybe you're eyeing something like this uh, Akai MPC or something, uh, and you want to know a little bit more about it and why you might need it. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to talk about a lot of my equipment. I'm going to talk about why I bought them, how much I spent on them, and just what I think of them. And I also wanted to really just give you some advice that you definitely need before you uh, decide to go on a shopping spree at Guitar Center. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted to um, uh, let you in on a few things that you should definitely know before you walk in those doors and start talking to the Guitar Center reps. But before we get into that, I actually had one exciting announcement. Uh, for those of you that might be familiar with r slash making hip hop, you might know that they are currently making a 2020 r slash making hip hop mixtape collaboration. Uh, and I want to let you guys know that I applied to be a part of it and I actually got accepted. And um, God, it's been so insane working on this really crazy project. There's like 20 producers, 20 rappers, like I think 10 mix engineers, and we're all just like throwing out tracks, getting on each other's traps, putting together demos. and. Uh, it's been a really crazy experience. I've gotten the opportunity to work with a bunch of really talented rappers. I think um, uh, once this mixtape actually drops, which is, should be in about a month, I think I'm going to do an entire video just kind of talking about, you know, what the experience was like uh, working on such a really big project with all these really heavy hitting artists. Um, and so yeah, uh, def definitely if you uh, are subscribed to r slash making hip hop, if you peruse that subreddit a lot, uh, feel free to subscribe here and uh, keep an eye out for that video. Uh, it's definitely going to be pretty cool. But anyways, back to today's lesson, which is about uh, just a guide to purchasing equipment. I wanted to start this video off by uh, giving you um, just some general advice uh, when it comes to purchasing equipment. Uh, and this is really that advice I was talking about that, that you should know before you step into a guitar center and start talking to the sales reps is, um, first of all, guitar center sales reps, they work off of commission, uh, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that business model, but you should know that you are kind of at risk of being upsailed, uh, you know, talked into more expensive equipment that you probably actually don't need. I think my experience for the most part has been pretty positive with everyone that I've talked to at Guitar Center. Usually they are telling me about equipment that genuinely would benefit me, but it's easy to get kind of get lost in all the things that you can buy and get talked into buying more than you actually uh, anticipated buying. So my rule of thumb before you go shopping really anywhere is to have a piece of equipment in mind that you plan to buy and just buy that equipment that day. If you see something else that you like, if they start mentioning other things that might uh, really help you out, uh, you should, you know, maybe take a mental note of that, but then go home and research it, sit with it for a little bit, really think, do I need this piece of equipment? Uh, and then come back another day. Uh, I think patience is a virtue when it comes to buying equipment. Uh, you, you should never really go out and go on a huge shopping spree, unless if you know for a fact why you need every single piece of equipment that you're about to buy and, and what you're going to do with it. Um, because yes, I've heard so many stories of people just walking into a guitar center. They're like, I don't want a beginner setup. I want to buy this once and I want to have a complete studio today. Um, that's a bad idea. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason why is because usually these people um, are new to music production, but they have the funds to buy uh, everything that you need for a music studio, but they don't really know what they're going to do with this equipment yet. And so basically they end up buying a lot of very expensive equipment that they might not actually need, and they go home with a lot of equipment that they're never actually going to touch. Um, and so to avoid that, I, I just urge you to kind of take this guide to heart and, and really um, get an idea in mind of why you need this equipment and what you're going to do with it uh, before you go to a store and buy it. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, 
Let's start talking about some of this equipment. I think a great place to start would probably be this DAW, uh, your digital audio workspace. So if you don't know, your DAW is your main um, software component. That is where you are doing all of your editing. That's really where you're doing all of your music production. Uh, and so really I want to drive home that this is going to be the most important piece of software, equipment, just your biggest tool when it comes to music production. So you should definitely make sure that you, um, you know, spend the money to get the, the DAW that you, that you really want. Because, uh, yeah, this is not something that you want to skimp on. And I could do a whole video on which DAW to choose, but I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of my personal advice for when you are choosing. Now, first of all, I think you definitely want to go with a DAW that is actually popular. There are tons of DAWs out there, but there's only a few that are really commonly, commonly used. Uh, and really, I think the two biggest ones are Ableton Live and FL Studio. And the reason why I say you should go with these more popular ones is because there are already so many resources for you to learn these DAWs. There are so many tutorials, there's no shortage of, of resources to help you get good at using these softwares. Um, so yeah, I think they are both really wonderful DAWs and the only real difference between all these DAWs is just kind of uh, the workflow that you can do when you're actually making a track, just what does it feel like, um, how, how does it enable your creativity, you know? I think uh, a lot of people really enjoy Ableton Live's uh, workflow um, and that's been my experience. I use Ableton Live. Uh, but I also know that FL Studio is insanely popular. Uh, maybe check out that. And both of these DAWs have different uh, tiers uh, uh, prices uh, that you can purchase them. I know that the cheapest option for Ableton is $100. Uh, the cheapest option for FL Studio is uh, $200. And I think the cheapest DAW out there that I think is still popular enough that you will have all the resources that you need would probably be Reaper. I think that one is $60. It's still not as popular as Ableton or FL, uh, but it might be worth checking it out if cost is a concern. And of course, I feel like maybe I should address the fact that a lot of people um, uh, get downloaded cracked versions of these DAWs. I don't really want to get into you know the whole moral dilemma of whether or not that's a good thing, but I do want to uh, at least warn you that when you do uh, download a cracked software, you have no idea what's on that software and you are running the risk of potentially breaking your computer. So. My personal advice, if I was going to do that, would be to download it on a virtual machine first, see what it does to it, uh, and also just be aware that even if your computer seems to work fine afterwards, uh, that is not guaranteed that it's not doing anything malicious. It could be uh, stealing information from your computer, it could be stealing uh, uh, processing power from your computer and using it to do malicious things like take down the US government and shit like that. So you know what? I, I personally do not download cracked so software, but I know a lot of you, especially those of you that are just getting started, are probably, you know, maybe 16 years old. I was only 17 when I started, and you might not have a job, and, you know, you might think this is a pretty good solution. Um, I really warn against it, but I'm, I'm not going to knock those of you that are downloading cracked <laughs> versions because I will admit DAWs are pretty expensive. So now that we've talked about DAWs, I think the next thing that you're going to want to buy would probably be a MIDI controller. So let's talk about that. So MIDI controllers are very important because they allow you to actually place MIDI notes using an actual like keyboard. Uh, and you can also MIDI map uh, functionalities in your DAWs to things like knobs and, and wheels and stuff like that. And that's something that you should keep in mind when you're looking for a MIDI controller is how many octaves does it have, how many knobs does it have, how many wheels does it have, and it, it, does this seem like it's going to um, suit your needs for the money that you're willing to spend. Now as you can see, this is an incredibly simple MIDI controller. I really love this thing though and I use it all the time. 
what I like about this is it has three octaves. Uh, most controllers generally tend to have only two, which I feel is very limiting. Uh, and you know, it's just got exactly what I would need. It has a wheel here that I can map to anything. It's got a pitch bend wheel here, and it's got this mod wheel that I, I like to MIDI map uh, different functionalities to, um, so that while I'm playing, I can, you know, use my, I can turn that with my thumb while I'm actually playing. Uh, and this is pretty nice. It's got an octave up, it's got an octave down. Uh, that's, you know, it helps. I, I've gotten quite good at, at just pressing that and actually jamming, <laughs> figuring out where I'm at uh, on the in my octaves. But yeah, this thing is called an iRig Keys. I got it on sale at Guitar Center. It was only a hundred bucks and it just seemed to, to suit my needs. Uh, really, you don't need to buy anything crazy. You just need to find something that is going to suit your needs. Now, in the MIDI controller realm, uh, keys might not be the only thing that you need. I think something that is also very important, especially to hip hop, is having drum pads. So let's talk a little bit about that. So I'm sure you may have seen all of these videos of people finger drumming, uh, usually on a MPC device like this or some other sort of um, drum pad device like Ableton Push or, you know, uh, things like that. Now the reason why you might want a device that has drum pads on it would be if you're going to do something that's very chopping and sampling uh, heavy. All of that really sample based hip hop uh, generally gets chopped up and put together on a device like this. Basically, the idea is to uh, chop up a sample, assign it to different pads, and then just jam with it on this uh, in a kind of finger drumming uh, style. Uh, what I like to do is I like to apply my drums uh, down here, and I, I like to do uh, samples of like dusty piano samples, dusty uh, trumpet samples, and all that. I assign that up here. And I like to record them all together. You can sort of, you can record them on different tracks, but I like to record them all together, and it just makes it all sound very cohesive. And that's kind of how you get a very cohesive sounding sample based hip hop. So I really recommend these MPC devices. Uh, this is the Akai MPC Studio. Uh, this is probably one of your cheapest options for an uh, MPC device. Uh, when I bought this, I think this was about $400. But it came with the MPC DAW along with 8 gigabytes worth of sounds to play with. Uh, so I think that was a very worthwhile investment. I think now it has dropped in price to about $300. Uh, so I think this is really a great device. I will say though, I don't even really use the DAW. I like to use Ableton and I essentially use this thing as a MIDI controller. But you know what, I still think it is worth the price. These uh, drum pads. Uh, they just have so much dynamic range to them, you know, you can just tap them slightly, you can really smack it, and you will definitely hear the volume difference. And I, I just, I can't stress enough how important it is to have drum pads if you're going to be doing a lot of hip-hop. Um, but, I mean, it, you can do it without it. I mean, gosh. <laughs> I did an entire album just without any MIDI controllers my first time around. <laughs> so, you know, you can definitely take your time in buying all of this equipment. I do want to say though, most people's complaint with the MPC Studio is that it is not a standalone device. You have to have this plugged into your computer for it to operate. <laughs> now I've never really found that as too much of a nuisance, but to some people who are used to working on only an MPC device and actually using the DAW that's built into like the screen and just doing it that way, uh, they, they want something that they're not going to have uh, need a, a laptop for. But personally, I'm like, it's 2020, who cares? I have my laptop with me everywhere anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> so moving on from all of this MIDI talk though, let's get into audio, recording audio. So first thing that you're going to need if you're going to be recording audio of any kind is you're going to need an audio interface. Uh, this little device here is uh, a Focusrite, it's called the Focusrite iTrack Solo, but essentially this is the same thing as a Focusrite Scarlett. Just look into the Focusrite Scarlett series, you'll see a bunch of other uh, similar sized audio interfaces that are essentially the exact same device. Uh, and they go for about $100, uh, perfect price. Uh, you don't need to spend anything more than that. You don't even really need 
anything more complicated than this audio interface. Uh, the only reason why you would want to buy a, a more expensive, bigger audio interface is to have more uh, channels here, more ports that you can plug into so that you could record multiple instruments at once. But if you're not going to be recording a jam band, uh, then this is going to take care of all of your problems. And there's not going to be a big uh, difference in audio quality, you know, depending on how much money you spend. You're getting pretty much the same audio quality. Uh, pretty much everyone I know uh, uses uh, some sort of Focusrite device. Um, and what's so great here is, as you can see, uh, you've got... Uh, a port here to record from anything from a quarter inch cable, you know, just like a guitar cable. So that includes uh, guitar, bass guitar, and what I like to do is I plug in my Casio keyboard and I've sampled so many sounds off that keyboard. I've sampled the piano itself. I play a lot of piano. Um, and me personally, my style is a lot of piano sampling, a lot of bass sampling, and even some guitar sampling, and I've been able to achieve all of that with just this device and a quarter inch cable. Aside from that, you'll also see that this also has a port for a microphone. Uh, and yeah, so pretty much any microphone will fit this. Uh, yeah, if you're a rapper, you're definitely going to need one of these, and you're probably going to need a, a splurge on a, on a good microphone. Um, uh, which, speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about microphones. Now, I personally don't really own a fancy microphone. As I said earlier, I basically sample everything through a quarter inch cable, and then all the other samples I need I get from the internet, or whoever I'm working with, whoever I'm collaborating with, generally has a microphone of their own. <laughs> but I do have some advice. Um, and this is actually some advice that I just saw today on Reddit. Um, uh, someone was talking about how to really justify sporking up money on a really good mic. Uh, basically, before you make your decision on any microphone, uh, it would be ideal to do a blind test with this microphone. So what you want to do is record your own voice on, like, say, a $700 mic and then record your voice, on, your voice on like a $70 mic and then do a blind test. I mean, sometimes you'll find that the cheaper mic actually comes with the better quality or at least the quality that you are looking for. And so after you do a blind test, you can confidently purchase that $70 mic knowing that it sounded better than that $700 mic, you know? Um, I, I guess a lot of people end up uh, spending way too much or, or a, a overspending on their microphones because they just think this is the most important thing. I've got to throw as much money at this as I can. And no, money does not always equal quality, but there generally is a reason why these microphones might be more expensive, but it might not be a reason that you should care about, you know? Um, so yeah. Um, in terms of brands of mics, I've, I've really enjoyed everything that I've used from Shure, S-H-U-R-E. Uh, I've used several mics from that. Whenever I'm collaborating with Alex Melzer, he generally has one or two Shure mics, just like in his backpack. Um, and I love them because you can get such great quality out of um, really any of their devices, and a lot of them are very portable, so you can even take them with you. I think... Um, They've even got one that you can plug into your phone and really turn your phone into a really good microphone that, like, say you're walking down the street and you like the ambience sounds of, you know, trains passing and cars going and you want to record that. That's a perfect device to do that on. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of these Shure uh, microphones are, you can find some, some really good ones for only like $100. And uh, yeah, definitely do your research on that. But anyways, moving on from that, I think that there's only really one last thing I want to talk about, and that is studio monitors. So you might be wondering what a studio monitor is, and basically a studio monitor is a listening device that gives you the raw audio completely unaltered. Uh, most uh, listening devices that are meant for just casual listening uh, generally have some sort of bass boost to them, or, or some sort of, they're generally equalized in some you know, way, modified in some way. 
And you know, that's fine because a lot of these uh, earbud companies, headphone companies, uh, they might be able to get a competitive advantage by having a little bit louder bass in their uh, earbuds or whatever. Uh, and that's fine, but you, you definitely don't want to be using these sorts of headphones, earbuds, and all that when you're doing your actual music production. Uh, you're definitely going to want to use a studio monitor. I like to use um, these Sony studio monitors. These are, these are some studio monitor headphones. And yeah, it just delivers uh, the audio exactly as it is to your ears. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Uh, I've had these for about five years. They're very durable, and yeah, that's really all I can say about them is great quality and very durable. I think that these, I can't remember how much these are, maybe around $100 or $200. Um, I don't know, maybe if, if, someone, <laughs> if someone knows, you can leave it in the comments. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that these are a great solution. You'll notice though that most people that actually have a more established studio or home music studio uh, will have uh, the studio monitor speakers. Um, and I think ideally you want to have some speakers because uh, first and foremost, you want to protect your ears. Uh, listening to headphones, you know, music producing with headphones is great, especially if you're trying to be respectful to like your neighbors and all that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you will protect your ears a lot better by um, just having it coming through speakers instead of something that's right in your ears. Um, so, I mean, I think something like this is great for the hobbyist. This is uh, wonderful for the hobbyist, but ideally someday, especially if you're doing this professionally, you really need to protect your ears. That is your living. So you need to get some some studio monitor speakers, you know? But yeah, I think that's pretty much all I had to say on this guide to purchasing equipment. If you have any questions at all, or if you want me to do a, like an entire video on any specific piece of equipment I showed you today, I would love to just leave a comment and let me know. And as you know, uh, I like to end my videos by doing a beat edit. Uh, I really hope I have time to do one for this video. I don't know because of this uh, art slash making hip hop mixtape has really been eating into my time. But yeah, I guess we'll find out if I had time to make that beat edit in like five, four, three, two.